Okay, in this short video, we're gonna talk about safety, right? We're gonna talk about how to, uh, what is required when changing a module, um, a, I, an IO module inside of a safety processor, right? So we all know modules fail and they fail in the field and when they fail in the field, generally speaking, if they're not safety, they're easy to change out. You just set the IP address and then you go. Or if it's a different protocol like device net or whatever, you set it up per node and then you would uh, install it and it would work. However, counter to that, the safety protocol is that the device is owned by the safety processor, meaning all the devices inside of each one of these uh, each one of these settings, right? So each one of these cards is going to be owned by the safety processor. And the safety processor has two actual processors. It has the processor and it has a backup processor as a spare processor because it scans it twice. It does a, uh, a double check of making sure uh, the safety is, is doing what it's supposed to do logically, right? And it also checks two things like IO and things of this nature. So what am I talking about? I'm talking about the setup of the actual safety uh, module itself, right? And in particular, I'm not necessarily talking about the setup or the way it's done. More or less, if you have to change a module, you're going to have to go to the safety tab and you're going to have to um, configure the ownership. Okay? So meaning when you replace a tag, when you replace a process or you when you're not a process but like a an IO card, or an IO device. Um, could it be remote IO? Could it be local IO? Could it be whatever the case may be? If it's owned by the safety processor, you're gonna have to go in the, into the IO and then go to the safety tab and then go and reset re, uh, the ownership to the processor. Now, again, when it comes down to that, it's very important you do that because of the simple fact of it will not uh, it will not actually accept that, that new component without ownership. And the reason being is because again, it is a safety protocol. Now again, I wanted to make this short video because that is quite confusing to some people um, because when they go to, they think that they could just change a regular device, like say for instance, this point IO right here, right? If you change the point IO, there's no safety over here. So if let's just say for instance, the point IO, this 1734-AENT uh, went out. Let's just say it went out. And then we had to actually change it out okay so this is just an eant right this is just a uh the lead of that rack right uh meaning it's the communications path to that actual uh the the io that's underneath it right it's the remote io right so if this went out we wouldn't have to change the ownership because there is no ownership it's a standard device however in the instance of you know it being a uh, safety device like, like these are cards like these are cards that are inside of the point IO right um, these are our cards that are, are inside of it if one of these cards went out we would again have to go into the safety uh, tab right here and reassess the ownership of that card and the reason that it, it does that it gives it a timestamp it gives it an ID it gives it all the information and then it basically it's, it gives it a signature and, and it reestablishes communication to the actual processor. And when it does that, again, everything will work properly. So again, when you come down here and you see all this stuff, this actual, like I said, device net card doesn't have safety, so you could change it out. However, everything up underneath it that communicates through that device net card does need to be changed because it is safety, all right? So again, keep that in mind. If you change out a safety device and it's not working, it is not the device that's not working. It is the actual point where you need to go ahead and can reconfigure the ownership of that device. So straight out of box, it's not going to know that the the PLC processor is not going to know that it is owned by that or that it owns that actual I/O. So that it can't control that I.O. until it's actually owned by that I.O. So please understand that you have to go and when you're changing safety components out, like uh, let's just say in this instance I'm, I'm describing a remote I.O. or a remote process or a local I.O., you need to go ahead and go into that safety tab, reset or reset the ownership, and then that establishes communication. Everything is good. You should start getting green lights. Everything should start functioning properly you should be able to reset your system and then go from there 
again, there are some instances where you do have to uh, break the safe, safety signature, where you come into the signature and you go over there and you unlock it. You wouldn't actually uh, break the safety signature, you would just unlock it to then go ahead and reset the configuration or reset the ownership. Uh, that is again dependent on what version you're on, so please don't hold that to uh, you know. Go ahead and try it first. Go ahead and try without un without um, unlocking the process or without unlocking the processor. Go ahead and open up the tab for the device you're changing out. Go to safety and try to reset the ownership. If it this uh, ownership reset is grayed out again, I'm offline. I'm not online right now, but. If it's grayed out, then you need to go into your safety processor and you need to just unlock it, right? Sometimes that requires, again, that uh, password, but then immediately afterwards, you need to lock it back, right? You don't do not ever have to break the safety signature. You just have to unlock the safety processor, meaning you have to have the password, okay? So just keep that in mind. Uh, some instances you do, some instances you don't. That is version dependent, but this is a quick and easy way to understand the process of uh, changing out a uh, safety device, right? When it comes to a communicated device through your backplane of your actual program. So please understand there are a lot of complexity to it, a lot of diversity to it, but I'm trying to give you a base and understanding of the process. And the understanding of that the IO card or the device talking that you have set up in your IO tree has to be owned by the actual processor for it to work properly. If it is not, it will not work properly and then therefore your system will not work. So please understand that and I do understand the frustration behind having the, the, the if you don't have the password or whatever the case may be, if you do or you are required to have the password to, uh, to reset the ownership, I do understand the frustration behind that. We all go through that just there are the somebody at your facility somebody at your process should have that actual safety process or the safety uh, signature um, we are that safety password all you have to do is unlock it it's merely that simple just come in here unlock it again I don't have one so if I uh, if I go in here and lock the process right now um, I can unlock it right here right that simple sometimes it's that simple generally speaking it's going to be a password right so again when it comes down to it you're going to have to enter that password but again that is version dependent you may or may not have to do that so first the first thing order protocol is to go ahead and try to uh, go to your your device you're changing out go to safety tab and see if you cannot go ahead and just configure the, the ownership 90 percent of the time you're able to do that sometimes you have to go in and actually un um you know unlock the processor right which again sometimes your processor may be unlocked already so you you're going to win you're going to have that ability already but again it really depends on what industry you're working in where you're working and um also to who was the last person involved in it right always safety first so when it comes down to safety make sure you do things the correct way never cut corners never do anything improperly but I want to show you a quick and easy way and, and at least understand the ownership between the IO and the actual processor, right? So that's the goal behind this, this video is to show you who owns it. And then when you're changing it out, make sure you reconfigure that ownership. You're not doing anything other than reconfiguring the ownership to make sure that that processor knows who, what device it's controlling. That's merely all you're doing because you are changing a physical device. Now, if you're working in a, a uh, facility that requires you to document that, please document that you did change that and do your standard protocol locally where you're at. Some places do, some places don't. I just want to give you a, a easy example of how to change that out. And again, so when it comes to safety, everybody has different protocols, so make sure you follow yours. And make sure you always take safety first when it comes to safety. All right, with that said, we'll see you guys on the next one.